Hello, thanks for joining me. I'm Kate Lohman, registered dietitian and nutritionist, and I'm here to share ways to keep our heart healthy. And you know, February is American Heart Month, and it's the ideal time for us to think about keeping our heart healthy. So the information I'm gonna sh share with you today, please share with your family and friends. So the leading cause of death, what do you, where do you think heart disease falls? And unfortunately, heart disease is the leading cause of death in our country. So we're hitting the ground here pretty with some pretty sobering stats, um, but heart disease is a leading cause. So it's real important that we think about how we can keep our heart healthy. Um, I kind of wanted to uh, differentiate between a stroke versus a heart attack that both in, involves blood flow, but stroke is a blocked blood flow to the brain and the heart attack is a blocked blood flow to the heart. The risk factors are the same for both. So heart disease, as I said, is the leading cause of death in the United States, but also worldwide. But it's also the number one preventable death. 80% of all heart disease is preventable. So that's the good news for us. So that's kind of what we're going to focus on today. So there's um, things you can do to um, help your risk and there's things that you really can't make any changes with. So um, things we cannot help for uh, heart disease is age and gender. And then after menopause, women lose the heart healthy pro um, protective effect of the hormone benefits. So after the age of 55, women are just as likely to die of heart disease as men. And, and did you know women typically hear about breast cancer, but heart disease kills six times the number of women as breast cancer does. So heart disease affects everybody. Um, race is also a factor. So um, the Heart Association says that the highest risk for heart disease is among uh, Blacks and non-Hispanic whites are second and with the lowest risk for heart disease among Hispanics. So family health history is important. We can't change our genetic factors, but we can still do things to help us reduce our risk regardless of our genes. And then we can increase our heart health. So here are some areas that we can focus on to make some changes to significantly reduce um, our risk for heart disease. And I'm gonna start with, uh, it's outlined in the seven steps for a healthier youth. So following these seven steps, this is basically what we're gonna go through is we're gonna talk about knowing our numbers, uh, maintaining a healthy weight, staying physically active, managing our stress, um, smoking, alcohol, and emphasizing as a dietitian, eating heart healthy. So the first step is to know your numbers. Knowledge is pow power, so learn and um, live. So knowing what your numbers are now, and um, especially in these times with COVID, we're not going to the doctors as much. So we may not know what our numbers are, but if you know where you stand right now, get a good baseline, you can tell what areas you kind of um, need to focus on. So uh, total cholesterol you hear about, you wanna keep that under 200. And cholesterol is that uh, waxy fat-like substance that's produced by the liver. And we, our body needs it. We need it for home hormones. We need it for bile acids, for, for indigestion. Um, there's two kinds, the HDL and the LDL. HDL is the good cholesterol. We want that to be over 60. LDL is the lousy or the bad cholesterol. And excessive LDL cholesterol is deposited in the walls of the artery. And this can lead to heart disease. Cholesterol is also found in the foods from animals like meats, um, dairy, and shrimp. If your cholesterol is high, then monitoring the foods that are high in cholesterol is really helpful. 
Um, we're going to talk a little bit later on about triglycerides um, and blood pressure. You want your blood pressure to be less than 120 over 80. That's ideal because the blood pressure, as you know, it's the force of your blood pushing against the walls of the artery. High blood pressure makes your heart work harder than normal. It makes the arteries more prone to injuries. The walls become harder and less elastic over time. And that can narrow the arteries and make it harder for the blood supply to get to your organs. And the arteries tend to get harder. Um, and as they get harder, fatty deposits and other things like blood clots get stuck easier. Um, also the fasting blood sugar, that's the blood sugar is, um, is when the carbohydrates from the fruit food breaks down into blood glucose that your body uses for energy. We need it, but we want to keep it under, um, a hundred. So maintaining a healthy weight, a healthy weight improves our overall health. It lowers our blood pressure. It lowers our cholesterol levels tends to lower our triglyceride levels. It tends to lower our blood sugar levels and hence lowering our risk for developing uh, diabetes. So maintaining a healthy weight is real important for your heart as is physical activity. So staying physically active, again, can reduce our blood pressure. And um, people who are more active tend to smoke less. It really helps with our, our diabetes and it reduces extra body weight for those who are obese or overweight. It also helps reduce our triglyceride levels. So um, I wanted to share this slide with ways to stay physically active at home. These are two um, different sites that I like that are free. They have a free option, um, sparkpeople.com has all kinds of different ideas for exercises and has the videos for exercises. And um, you can get on their mailing list where, where they would send you um, exercises every day that you can do uh, you know, in the comfort of your own home. A uh, Fit On app is uh, a great app that you can have on your phone or your computer that you can add into, um, that you can then show on your TV and has um, like a hundred or so different exercises based on different levels and different, it's got yoga, it's got cardio, it's got stretching that has, you know, lots of great ideas that are free. That one also has a paid service, but the free fit on app has is wonderful videos of exercises, different lengths of time that I really encourage. So anything you can do to be more active can help your heart as, as you know, our heart is a muscle. So this fourth step is managing stress, especially in these times of COVID. It's like people are really stressful. Stress affects our heart. It ex ex uh, affects our blood pressure. Um, and stress can cause people, um, people tend to overeat a lot of times from stress, tend to exercise less and to possibly smoke more. So, you know, finding ways to manage stress um, is so good for our heart. As this step five is don't smoke. And the sixth step is not to drink alcohol in excess. So a lot of times people ask me, isn't alcohol good for your heart? Doctors do not recommend drinking alcohol for your heart. If you like to drink alcohol, drink in moderation. And for women, that's one drink a day for men up to two drinks a day. Drinking more than three alcoholic drinks a day is detrimental to our heart. And I just wanted to emphasize what the size of a drink is that they're referring to. That's five ounces of a glass of wine. That's five, five eighths of a cup. So it's not a generous pour. And, and I have a picture here of red wine because red wine is actually has um, more heart health benefits because the uh, red wine has what's called resveratrols in the wine. And that has some heart health properties for women, one glass for men, no more than two glasses, five ounce um, glasses of wine, 1.5 ounces of liquor or a 12 ounce um, 
beer or wine cooler. So just to kind of keep, keep be on the same page with what um, an alcoholic drink looks like. The seventh step is to eat heart healthy. So I'm going to start with talking about reading food labels because that can that can be really helpful for people. Um, and so what should we look for? So here is the new nutrition facts labels. I like it because um, the information that's important is in bolder lettering. So not only is a calories bolder, but also what a serving size is. So for this product, uh, whatever this product is, a serving size is one and a half cups. So how many of us actually measure out how much um, we're going to use when we have something? It's more likely like for a cereal or a snack, we just you know pour, pour some into a bowl. So oftentimes if you're doing that as, as opposed to knowing what the, your portion size is compared to the serving size, it can um, be pretty, um, does it really kind of distort what your goals are specifically, like if you look at sodium um, and one serving of one and a half cup is 430 milligrams, which is about 19% of your daily uh, needs. So if you're actually serving in two or three cups of this product, like if it's a cereal, you're going to get a lot more like up to like 40% of your sodium um, needs in one serving. As uh, we'll talk a little bit later about, you know, how much we need to restrict our sodium by. So, and the same with the carbohydrates. If somebody is watching their car carbohydrates, if they're having one and a half cup, they know how many carbs they're having. But if they're just pouring in um, the food into a bowl or a plate, you don't really know. So that if, if it's a product that you're having pretty frequently, it's a good idea if there's any of these uh, things that you are concerned about, your sodium levels, your cholesterol, your carbohydrates, how much um, added sugars you're having, then it would be good to um, measure it to see exactly how, much, how many servings you're, you're having. So here's some ways to reduce the calories. So having breakfast every day and having regular meals. So sometimes people will say, well, I'm trying to cut down on my calories so I'm not eating breakfast. The breakfast kind of gets your metabolism started. So it's nice to have breakfast. And on the next slide, it'll show you kind of what you want to look for in your meal. Um, looking for lower fat alternatives to be more heart healthy options. Drinking enough fluids focusing on fruits and vegetables. These are both items, the fluids and the fruits and the vegetables. Most people I work with um, are, are not getting adequate water in their diet or in their meal and fruits and vegetables in their meal. So focusing get on getting enough fruits and vegetables, which are very heart healthy. They've got a lot of the antioxidants that is good for your heart, um, is really important. It's a great source of fiber. Um, Fluids, most people don't get enough fluids. Uh, looking for lean meats and skim dairy products are a good way to reduce calories. And limiting extra sugars to 40 grams a day or about, which is about 10 teaspoons a day. And that's extra sugars. So extra sugars do not include the natural sugars that would be in your fruits or in like milk. Those are natural sugars. These are added sugars. And in that previous slide, it shows you, you know, right here, it's like how much added sugars are in this product. So this would not include um, sugar like from fruit. So also eating slowly. So that's a good way to reduce calories is to just kind of um, eat slower and think about how hungry you are and, and start to slow down when you're um, starting to get full. Practicing portion control, like going from a smaller bowl to see if you're getting to feel comfortable with um, less food. I love this um, picture of the healthy eating plate and it's from the Harvard School of Public Health. And I could just focus my talk on just this slide, because it really includes everything that um, 
you would want to know about a heart healthy diet. It talks about using healthy oils like olive oil and canola oil and what to limit, limiting butter and avoiding your trans fats. Focusing on vegetables and getting a variety. Potatoes and french fries do not count as, um, as a vegetable. We're gonna, we're gonna put like a baked potato over in the whole grains. Having plenty of fruits in all the colors. So people who say, oh, I'll eat an apple, you know, every day or so. It's like, okay, have an apple, have some berries, have a banana, you know, have a nice variety because all the fruit has different vitamins and minerals and antioxidants. That's so important for your heart. I love this little icon of staying active, like just a reminder. So that's like, okay, eating well, but also staying active is so important for your heart. Up here on the right corner about water drinking water or tea or coffee with little or no sugar, limiting milk and dairy and juice, avoiding sugary drinks. That's, you know, if, if somebody has a lot of soda and just focuses on, you know, switching up from a sugary drink to drinking more water, that's a great start. The whole grains, like whole grain pastas and brown rices and limiting the refined grains. Yeah, that's a great tip. Healthy proteins, that's fish, uh, poultry, uh, beans, and nuts, and limiting red meat, avoiding bacon and cold cuts. Those are not um, heart healthy foods. So uh, just to kind of reiterate what I just talked about, the nutrient dense foods are these types of foods when prepared without the solid fats, sugars, or salts. So this is a great area to kind of focus on uh, the, the foods that are nutrient dense, that are heart healthy foods. So why talk about reducing fats? Eating more fat than your body needs, it can raise your blood cholesterol levels. And as I said before, it increases your risk for heart disease. So these are the healthier fats to um, have more often. And these are like the monounsaturated and the polyunsaturated fats that you hear about. The olive oils, avocados, uh, fishy oils, I mean, oily fish, uh, nuts, a variety of nuts, uh, seeds like um, sunflower seeds, chia seeds, uh, sesame seeds. Those all are have good healthy fats Nut butters tend to have the healthy fats. If they don't have additional um, added fats added to it, um, I was checking um, my friend's peanut butter and it had, um, so in addition to the peanut butter, it had extra salt and it had extra um, like partially, hydrogen, partially hydrogenated fats. And those are, that tends to give it that creamier taste. It's a, it gives it a good mouthfeel but it's really not good for your heart. So look for um, your peanut butters or your almond butters that are just are the, the, the nuts and maybe, maybe a little bit of salt. It's on your, your taste buds. Um, hummus is the, from the chickpeas are a great source of healthy fats as are the lean meats. So it's like a, a lean chicken without the um, skin on it. These are the fats that have a heart, um, are heart healthy. These try to have less often. They are more of the saturated fats. That's like the fried foods, um, ice creams, cake-like desserts, butter, uh, the fatty meats, like the bacon and the processed meats, uh, the cream-based toppings, like the sour cream, um, the cream cheese, um, the high fat cheese products like this and cream based dips that are made with cream in the, in the base, they tend, you know, try to have those less often. And I kind of want to talk a little bit more about specific type of polyunsaturated fats, which are the omega-3 fats. And the Heart Association recommends eating fish that are high in omega-3 fatty acids at least twice a week. And here's a picture of salmon, delicious salmon. So serving is about five ounces. And if you compare it to like the size of a deck of cards, which is a three ounces, 
a five ounce serving to have that like twice a week um, is really good for your health. The omega-3 fatty acids would be in um, oily fish like salmon, uh, trout, tuna, sardines, herring, and to a lesser extent in like flaxseed meal or walnuts. So the fatty, um, the omega-3 fatty acids tend, their benefits is that it tends to reduce arrhythmia, reduce your triglyceride levels, uh, decrease the growth of like plaque, arthrosclerotic plaque, and to slightly lower your blood pressure. So um, having omega-3 fatty acids, our body needs that. And we, um, the fatty fish are the main source. So to kind of go over what we just talked about, ways to reduce fat, looking for low fat and skim dairy products, eating the lean meat and baking, roasting, broiling, grilling, or poaching. Like one of my favorite ways to make salmon is to poach it in some flavorful water that has herbs and some onions and um, lemon in it and poach it in there. It's really, it's very moist, very flavorful. Avoiding fried foods and looking for the hidden fats and like salad dressing and processed foods specifically. Look and looking for the healthy fats uh, that we had talked about. So I want to talk a little bit about triglycerides. As we um, said before, earlier that you want your triglyceride levels to be under 150. And triglycerides tend to show up in diets that are high in alcohol, um, uh, sugar, and, and the simple carbohydrates. So uh, limiting or avoiding your um, alcohol, having um, limiting sugar to less than 40 grams or 10 teaspoons of added sugar a day and having less of the carbs are, is a great way to um, reduce your uh, triglycerides. In addition to, as we talked about earlier, um, being more active and um, the omega-3s tend to also reduce your triglycerides. So I also wanna talk a little bit about lowering your sodium. A lot of times um, people typically tend to have a higher sodium diet. And here's some ways to reduce it as lower salt intake can improve our blood pressure. So, and it's by using, um, don't use added salt and using more fresh fruits and vegetables and meats or frozen. So fresh as compared to canned. It, uh, canned foods tend to have higher sodium and I have listed on here that if you do have canned foods, if you can, like with um, like chickpeas or um, green beans, is to rinse them in water using a strainer to try to get the excess salt. Some things you can't, but if it's something that you can actually uh, rinse with water, that's a good way to um, reduce excess salt. And watch for the sodium in uh, condiments like a lot of the sauces, um, soy sauce tends to be higher in sodium. So I have to talk about fiber with heart health. Fiber is so important for heart health. It's been shown to lower our cholesterol, especially um, the LDL. It helps with keeping us feeling full because uh, the food goes through, gets digested slower uh, with, the, with a higher fiber diet. It's good for our, our digestive system and it's associated with a beneficial compound. So you've got your beneficial in your gut, the probiotics, they need the food and that's in the fiber is prebiotics is um, fiber. And there's a great study on how um, fiber helped reduce heart attacks. And they found that men with 29 grams of fiber a day had a 40% decrease in um, heart attack, which is pretty significant. Most people don't get enough fiber in their diet. So for women, it's like 25 grams of fiber. For men, it's closer to um, 29 to 32 grams of fiber a day. So um, fiber is very important for heart health. Here's some fiber sources. And specifically, I, I like to point out like oats and barley. There's been research on the benefits um, that has more of the soluble fiber that is really good for lowering your LDL cholesterol. So here's some nice sources of fiber to add some more fiber to your day. 
So, and when you look at the nutrition label, look for the higher fiber foods, which is like five grams or more of fiber per serving. So this is just kind of a summary of um, heart healthy eating recommendations. You know, having like 30% or less of your diet of total fat, having less than 10% of your calories from saturated and really cutting back on your trans fats. Trans fats have been banned in the United States, but um, there's a little clause that kind of allows a little bit in. So if you have less than um, 0 0.5 grams of trans fat in a food, you can say it's trans fat free. So for example, um, like in peanut butter, it has um, partially hydrogenated fats, but if it just has a little bit, it will say, okay, you can say that that's trans fat free, but it actually has, you know, up to a half of a gram. So depending on how much of a serving or how often you have foods that have like the partially hydrogenated fats, you're actually getting trans fats. Um, the monounsaturated fats are the good fats, along with the polyunsaturated fats. Cholesterol, you know, focus on less than 300 milligrams a day. And sodium, try to have less than 24 milligrams. And focus on fiber, 15, 25 to 35 grams um, per day. So remember, it's never too early, it's never too late to build a strong and healthy heart. Following these seven steps that I laid out can be shown to be really successful for heart health. So I hope you find something in there that you can start working on today. And please share this information with your family and friends. Thank you.